Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are on the planet. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tuesday, the 7th of June, Bull versus Bear webinar with Steve Marty on the call for Trade Day. Welcome, everyone. We're going to go through our usual, normal, regular run through, uh, calendar, what we've had, what we've got coming up, state markets right now, what's going on from a geopolitical, macroeconomic, fundamental basis, taking a look at some articles from the major newswires, and then we'll have a quick run through the charts for the markets that I know you guys trade. SP, NASDAQ, gold, oil seems to be the favorite amongst our traders. So, um, let's have a look in here. RBA um, uh, overnight in here. Uh, we've had a uh, rate hike from the RBA um, kind of forecast in here. And um, yeah, so um, up to 0.85%. Um, and uh, we've had some UK data in here, uh, PMI data that's running behind um, on the rest of the PMI data we got because of the um because of the excuse me because of the uh holidays we had in the uk last week so slightly beating expectations here on the uk data um just from overnight as well we had um uh, boris johnson in the uk survived a uh, vote of no confidence but only kind of just it was a very um unconvincing um um a, a vote of no confidence uh, that he did survive uh, but a lot of his own party voting against him um which puts his um his position uh, rather fragile as we go forward uh, hasn't had a really significant impact on financial markets hasn't had a significant impact on um even the pound in here uh, pounds only slightly lower in here but with most currencies lower versus the dollar in here this morning um what else we've got coming up let's take a look ahead uh yellen speaking at 10 o'clock uh, uh eastern time today um and then we get um the oil the regular weekly oil data comes out at 4 30 later today and then japanese gdp overnight nothing in here really going to trouble us too much even yellen or probably not too much obviously oil if you're trading uh, the oil data the weekly api oil data if you're trading oil needs to be watched let's take a look at five things you need to start your day in here so um uh, Bellwether semiconductor prices, spot rate for shipping containers, and North America spot prices also says that some of the key supply side factors driving global inflation levels are turning around, meaning some relief could be on the horizon. So, um, various different indicators in here semiconductor prices, shipping containers, North America's fertilizer prices. So, these are all things that have gone significantly higher and driven inflation higher. There's signs that they're turning around. And I think there's an article on here um from bloomberg has uh, inflation is supposed to ease according to these three key indicators so it's, this is a, the more detailed article that they're um, um referring to there uh, chips shipping container um come off peaks in here and then they've also got in here north america fertilizer prices you can see all rolling back down in here so i think that's um kind of quite interesting um so something we should definitely be watching monitoring um as we go forward um because if we are going to hit peak inflation um then um and we start to see inflation starting to soften it might see uh the uh central banks globally in particular the fed start to maybe back off slightly and if we get the fed slightly backing off in here what we might end up seeing is a, a more significant um a rally um in to riskier assets um, in of obviously of no in here um, would be looking at the um, would be looking at the uh, US stock indices potentially pushing um, higher on the back of that. So I think that's uh, this is definitely something to be uh, is noteworthy um, and it's uh, it's a good little article if you want to go and uh, find that it's, it is in you can get to it from the five things to start your day. They have got uh, in here the hyperlink to it there. So um, take a look. Uh, we've already mentioned Boris Johnson and clung on to power. Money's comments though um, are quite a big mutiny though. Um, so suggesting his days may be numbered impact on markets are uh, barely negligible uh the rally in raw materials has little sign of uh, pushing the bloomer commodity spot index to a record high so although we've got some of these inflation messages we just mentioned in here rolling over in here we are seeing um the commodity prices um pushing significantly higher again in here um obviously energy is a big part of that um and crude at around hundred dollars as a battle uh, natural gas oil and wheat among the biggest movers to the upside this year so um and copper has had a really strong rebound um, um of late as well um so stocks have um, uh, dropped uh, slightly we had a, a fairly strong day yesterday uh, for much of the day but did give up gains uh, the u.s equity indices more than the european indices european indices did fairly well yesterday um but uh, european indices dropping uh, tech really led us higher tech retail media um, now leading european uh, um, equity indices 
um, uh, lower in here this morning. Okay, so and I say we've got fairly light data. We did have the trade data in here. I kind of skipped over that, but I mean trade balance. I've been doing this thirty years, and I've never seen that trade data have any significant impact on the markets. Um, so yeah, so that's what we've got coming up. So uh, just to recap, yeah, the Wall, Wall Street ends up with growth stocks, but inflation fears linger. So we did have a positive day yesterday. The markets um, started off um, pretty much near their highs, and then they, but they did roll back lower um, on the day in here. Uh, technically, European shares are back lower though. Um, this is just lazy journalism in my opinion on tighter monetary policy fears this is talking about the ecb obviously coming up um on thursday but that's been in the market for um for ages in here um so the um rba uh, the interest rate hike from the rba was um a uh, a more of a, a it was a bigger a hike than anticipated uh, but not um particularly um aggressively bigger than anticipated you know the actual um if you look at the fx markets the australian dollar um didn't really move significantly so it shows a lot of that rate hike uh, was built in even though it was a fairly large interest rate hike that we did get from the rba um, and obviously the ecb coming up on thursday we are expecting um, them to ease their quantitative easing you know to back off from the quantitative easing, start to reverse the quantitative easing and then also to maybe start to flag when they're going to first hike interest rates with the anticipation being july and um, this probably hasn't helped markets in uh, this morning uh, Musk threatening to tell up his twitter deal so that's no doubt um, weighed on tech stocks uh, globally in here this morning and then us futures down as well jump with stocks as growth fears fester okay so policy tidy ignites soft landing versus recession debate um so yeah i mean just back but i mean again a little bit of kind of lazy journalism in here and um target falls in pre-market the inventory woes prompt outlook cuts so um target remember was the one that really targets uh, uh earnings in here uh, previously uh, sent the market significantly lower uh back last month right yeah last month so uh back in may um so um yeah yeah, so that's that's a little bit of a worry in here um, and is not helping matters in here this morning. Um, and then that's the article we were discussing here about um, chips um, and shipping and fertilizer. Uh, from uh, the Reuters, not too much to add in here. So just European stocks, as I said, down. We're about uh, three quarters to one percent down, depending on which index you look at in Europe this morning. And then on the back of that, we like kind of eked out gains on the Dow and, and the other indices yesterday. Um, in the end, not really up that much, uh, but we're notably lower in here, giving up a lot of the gains from yesterday. Uh, the Dow um, is down uh, nearly one percent, and the Nasdaq one point two four percent. Fed tool uh, quickly, nothing to really add to what we said yesterday. Market's pretty nailed on in here. The June meeting there, you can see looking for fifty. Uh, the July meeting pretty much 50 with an outside chance of 75. And then if we go out to the September, that's where the real indecision comes. Uh, once we have the summer break and then going out into September, the real indecision comes in here. What are they going to do? You know, and here and, you know, this is pricing in another 50, but risk of maybe only a 25 and risk of even a 75 um, going out into September. Uh, let's run through some charts and it's a bit of a whistle stop tour in here today, but um, there's not really too much going on um, from a macro fundamental geopolitical perspective. Um, this is a little bit worrying the fact that, you know, so this is the NASDAQ, which kind of, you know, led us kind of back higher in here. Uh, back at the end of uh, last month, the end of May, we were consolidation last week. Good Thursday, bad Friday after the payroll data. Yesterday it was a it was a decent day. You know, when we came on, we were all the way up here somewhere and didn't really get any further gains, and then closed pretty much unchanged on the day, and obviously lower. And we're sitting right on the lows in here. So if we zoom in on the Nasdaq on the 15 minute chart, in here I'm actually going to get rid of all the old analysis. You can see look where we just held so you've got we've had this consolidation phase since we had the strong rally so there's the may rally and then we've been in this consolidation phase in here and just rescale that and you can see the market today look there's that spike so you can see multiple lows in this whole area here pretty much from like 12 500 down to like 12 450 say right and you can see the low there that spike low that we had this was from the second of june the spike low just reading that off 12 442 and a half is that right yeah 12 442 and a half and then this morning we just you know just in the last half hour or so we spiked down to 12 439 actually so we did just undercut just undercut that low there and then a fairly solid rebound um, from there but you know i think you know you know i'm gonna say you can venture along here with a stop and reverse if it breaks here convincingly particularly once the actual market is open but we've obviously we've actually 
triggered you know if there's stops under there you may have triggered them stops might be a bit deeper you know it's only gone through there for by what did i say like three points right 40 42 and a half down to 39 and a half so it may not have triggered any stops as yet the stops probably be a little bit deeper than that um so you may have another go in here flush out the stops that could be the buy opportunity though so maybe watching um another move down in here if we move down and quickly come back I think that's a buy opportunity. If it moves below and doesn't come back and we go into the cash market open and we're below here, then it's sell. OK, so then this becomes a bigger topping pattern. You'd argue this is either a triple or a quadruple top. One, two, three, four top. You know, you say four, or maybe these one, two, three up here. I don't know. Whatever it is, is a topping pattern. And if it breaks down for you, you know, it's, it's repeatedly probed down into this area and come back. If it goes back down and stays below, I'd say 12,450, then it looks very negative And we could see a much deeper correction to like 350, maybe down to 300. So watch out for that. At the moment, tentatively holding on to bullish but you know it is very vulnerable um obviously it's not just the nasdaq those the s&p now the asdaq uh, the s&p not quite as vulnerable we haven't been down to the range lows yet but you can see potential for a topping this could develop into a topping pattern and if you go into the 15 minutes on the s&p again going to get rid of all the old analysis again this whole area here really you know between i guess 40 40 90 down to here down to 40 70 the market you can see how many times it's gone down here and bounced down down here bounce 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 and then obviously these two lows now the low down here is at 41.05 and a half and this one's at 05 i think um sorry not 05 and a half excuse me so the low here 40 71 and a half and this one in here is uh, 40 72 and a quarter so you know the market has been you know we flashed down there about half an hour ago and then the market has rebounded looks like it's trying to hold again we may get a push down there we may run some stops maybe if it goes below and holds and comes back that's your buy opportunity maybe now's the buy opportunity looking for a move back above um, any kind of resistance point so we have like maybe you got this line that comes down through here why did that not work Uh, so so through here maybe back up through here uh, you'd be looking at and then through that peak there so back above 41 well the trend line's coming in around 4101 that little peak there is around 40 well, so i can give you the exact number 4103 and a quarter up through there kind of looks positive again right so it is kind of they're flirting with these supports in here i'm just going to actually go and jump to the dow because it might give us some more color so the dow is the same kind of thing as well you know same as the s p really not gone and tested these lows in here so just hanging on just about hanging on in here but if it breaks you know i'm not you know hanging on to any kind of bullishness if it breaks and stays below then it looks it looks far more negative uh let's take a look at um oil and gold it will kick up with oil so we kind of a little bit of a dislocation in here with uh oil price you know we were we were did have that inverse relationship really between oil and gold uh oil and stocks in here um for a little while going on on an intraday basis that's kind of br uh, broken down there so um oil was higher then back lower yesterday and then lower again this morning and stocks lower as well so um that kind of inverse relationship is kind of broken down in here um on oil let's uh, just zoom in on the 15 minute in here it's looking a little tired oil to be quite honest you know you've had that that latest up uh, a sprint uh, the market kind of tried to hold at 23.6 initially then we've got lower lows and lower highs now we spoke yesterday remember it was like a horizontal break of this trend line and now the market is actually breaking so it's not a big impulsive sell-off but does look vulnerable and i think down through you know you've held similar to what the s p in here you held just held yesterday's lows here 17 uh, 11763 we've held a couple of times here so 11776 11772 you know down through actually no so, so uh, yeah well down through 11763 this looks vulnerable to maybe a move down of i don't know down into like the mid 116s so yeah i mean this looks a little bit worrying you could see a deeper correction here on oil um if it breaks down through this horse now if it breaks every horse is that you know because it looks like the correlation has gone positive with stocks at the moment but i mean if it does break down here that should be positive for stock so you know keeping an eye on that one there uh let's take a look at gold um kind of very 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 sideways in here over the last one to two weeks um market did dip and rebound um it was a strong recovery off this candle though last week and we did make a new recovery high. so you've got kind of higher highs and higher lows so you know going into this you'd say it's kind of positive um in here let's get rid of all this old analysis 
and you'd probably be re if you're redrawing the trend line off the top that's been reversed this morning so that looks more positive so yeah i mean i think there's upside in here uh, for gold uh, if we look at the retracement from the top as well what do we have on that where have we got back up to well, we've just gone through the 38.2% retracement as well in the last like couple of hours. So this is looking uh, more like a secure base in here. Looks like there's more upside. You know, again, on this 15 minute chart, you've got higher highs and higher lows. Just made a new high in here in the last hour, dipping. You've got a positive, you know, it's kind of a little positive candlestick just forming here at the moment. So I think there is upside in here for gold. So upside for gold, potential downside for oil and stock indices clinging to bullishness but you know watching for maybe a break of those lows particularly on the nasdaq and potentially the s p to signal some stop running and then we'll have to see what happens after the stops have run uh, whether it stays below those that kind of pivotal area on the stocks those pivotal areas of the recent lows or whether it flashes below comes back and then it's actually a buy signal all right guys i'm gonna wrap it up there gonna um we you know um thanks for bearing with us by the way it's gonna um on the technology front you know i think things most things are moving ahead uh, okay uh I th as far as i'm aware you know last time i spoke to james uh we're all kind of back on track so apologies if it did have any impact some of you may not have even realized there was any kind of impact um but i think we're uh, all okay now um so uh yeah uh, thanks for bearing with us if you were impacted and if you weren't just uh, stay with it and uh, good luck have a great trading day and i'll be back with you with another bull versus bear webinar tomorrow take care